Well, 4020 is in primer right now, and we've got a mess of water on the floor, but it is what it is. So, we've got the rolls all on this unit, and now we have to put the scraper bars on, and we've got to flip all of the um, teeth, the tips rather, on the end of the spring tooth. Another thing that we have that we've got to work on, we've got these brackets here, this hinge bracket is starting to egg out on this front hinge. It's not doing it on the back, but it's getting all the torque from the cylinder that folds up the wing. So we're going to pop this pin out and we're going to weld the plate on there, put longer pins in. That side there isn't wore out as bad as the uh, left side. So this left side is wore out pretty good. So um, we're going to get working on that. We've got a bent spring tooth bar holder right there. And then once we get it folded up, we're going to pull the wheels off of it. And... Um, check the wheel bearings there is some slop in them they need tightened up and um, repacked with some fresh grease uh, yeah it's not really going to be any easier with it folded up to put them on than it is to uh, we just got to dig them out of there we could work on them right now actually with it unfolded what they have done is they've taken these scraper paddles, pieces rather, and they have flipped them over. So we're going to get one more use out of them. Closing in on this roll of Harrow. We're doing a lot of screwing around here. Kerr is making himself up a template right now so that we can cut the pieces that I drilled to match what we need on the roll of Harrow here on the, on the main frame. This side here wasn't as bad as the left side. The left side was 
egged out pretty good. It would probably last a long time. We'll show you what the pins look like that we took out of that, but that's what that hole looks like right there. And as things get egged out, it actually has more of a chance of breaking something because it's over exerting itself. So we've got an oil leak, it looks like right there. Uh, the boys went ahead and pulled all the wheel hub assemblies apart and repacked them with grease. Uh, just trying to think what else. They've got the tips done. Got some teeth that they had to put on here. They've got to get another one right there. They must have forgot about that one. And they've got the uh, scraper bar on the back here. Jaden, you got a tooth that you could put on over there. You forget already? Yeah. You forgot. Yeah, I did forget a little bit. You forgot. I okay. Forget. Um, we had a hell of a time with this roll of hair being that it was wore out. We kept breaking these scraper bars off because there was so much play in the wheels that they were running back and forth getting caught in these uh, scrapers. So what we did, being that they're war, we ended up just flipping them over. You can see this back roll here on this uh, left side is uh you know they're really wore off but you could just flip them and then we've got about three eighths of an inch to a half an inch gap there and that back wheel assembly here when you're in the moist soil they'll, they'll get all packed in so the boys are flipping a cotton edge on this one bucket and they're waiting for parts for the merger. So this is the material we're using. We've got four holes drilled in this plate here. We're going to mark that. We're going to cut it out. And then we'll clean that all up with a grinder and get that uh, welded into place. These are the old pins that came out. This was the pin that was in the right hand side. This one's not wore that much, but the one that was on the left, because there was so much play in it, it was really getting after the pin. And probably after a while, this pin would have broke. And it would have broke with the wing about straight up in the air, and then that would have come crashing down, breaking everything. So, just making pictures here making pictures for me <laughs> and Jared is putting some Bondo on the 4020 fender I know it should be against the law using that stuff but we're gonna do it anyways <laughs> don't tell anybody this stuff is the best when you when it hardens and you start to grind it down and smooth it and get it in the, the shape it's supposed to be in. That's, that's a fun job. Yeah. Alright, we got 
got this one side here welded and now what I've got to do is I've got to drill holes in the ends of the pin so that we can get it held in with roll pins. So he's got to weld that other side yet. Jason's just getting done. We're working on this Ford next door. And the guys are starting to put the merger back together here. And what they're doing is putting new bearings on all of the uh, tooth bars. We've got a pile more, pile of parts here. So these are the cam follower tracks here, a bunch of shafts. We've got bearings here for all the tooth bars. We've got boxes of them. They're here and there. We got bolts. We got yeah, just a mess of crap here. Now Jason worked on this thing here and I don't know it doesn't matter what kind of vehicle you have but if anybody owned this Ford truck they would never own another one this thing is the biggest piece of crap we've ever owned we put an alternator and a uh, battery in this here today and what else did you do crank position sensor yeah but Hard this thing is just a pile of crap and uh we bought a Chevy uh, farm truck and we went to Chevy because this thing is just such a pile of crap. But this was the old uh, Navarino Fire Department rescue uh, truck. It only had like 20,000 miles on it when we bought it. It's just a pile of crap. So, yeah, you need something to do. do. This guy's second day on the job. Yeah, yeah. Broke, his, broke his hand a while ago, and uh, we're working him now, right, Bob? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, Jared's blowing all the Bondo off himself, and he has his fenders. He's been fixing them up a little bit. He put a little bit of a cast on here. Put some bondo in on him. He's got this one all packed in. Add some rust holes here. The trouble with these things is they're all stamped material. And then they got a heavy plate in right here. And it just fills in with rust. These these are aftermarket fenders. They haven't been on there that long. But um, they usually get water down in here. And then what happens is, is the crap gets in, it can't get out the bottom, and uh, they end up rusting up on you. You got the bracket that stuffs in here. It's just a, these are probably made over in frickin' India or something. So, but they are what they are, and the original John Deere fenders are just a lot of money. And you could tell an aftermarket fender, the bend, right here is not the same but yeah i don't know i guess these ain't too bad but we're going to paint them up we're going to make them look like factory new and they're going to serve their purpose all right kerr has this all welded up here and we ended up drilling some holes in our pins here and we're just gonna slide that in there now we got to pound this roll pin in this other side and then this is gonna do it for this unit here we'll be able to pull it outside and we're gonna back that other one in here and get the snow melting off of it and then we'll do everything to that one that we ended up doing to this one this is the older one of the two and I'm hoping that we don't have to reinforce this hinge here but um if we do have to do it we've got enough material to uh reinforce that other one as well all right so we've got all the uh work done on this roll of harrow we call it a roll of harrow it's probably called a cultimulture depending on where you're from 
we ended up replacing all the wheels there's 177 wheels i believe on this one how many wheels on this seven 22 times seven 154 and 23 177 it's 177 wheels on this and judging by the paperwork it says these wheels weigh i think 30 pounds each we replaced all the bearings on the roller shafts new uh tubes that go inside the rollers they flipped all the tips had to replace some teeth here and there the boys ended up pulling the wheel bearing assemblies apart repacking the bearings tightening them up kerr ended up beefing up this hinge point on the left wing and the right wing we've got new pins and whatever in there had to replace a tail light lens i think that's gonna about do it for this one and we're going to uh pull the other one inside here momentarily so this is the older unit of the two and they're both identical to each other they're both 30 feet wide and um they were they were wore out so we're gonna back the tractor in hook on pull this one out we'll back the other one in let it get thawed out in the morning we'll have to pull it back out this guy here is going to squeegee the floor off because it's got some snow on it yet so that we're not working in puddles here and uh yeah so we're gonna get to it here park that there for now and now we're gonna walk over and uh we'll take a glance at this one for a second but we'll look at it a little better once it's inside they've got it hooked to the 8320 and it doesn't look like this one's got all that much snow on it this one was froze to the ground but things have gotten a little warmer here and uh this one is all right but boy got a bearing gone right there yeah all right this is what we're working on today we have started the work on this second roll herald this is the newer one of the two that we own they're both identical however this one is a few years newer this one's seven years old we don't have to rebuild this hinge joint like we did on the other one however this one's going to need a new couple of new tires uh, basically doing the same thing we're putting all new wheels on it new arbor shafts and new bearings we have a few more scrapers to do on this one than what we had to do on the other one all of the uh bearings have been taken off of the end of the roller assemblies and we're going to be getting underway here in a little while pulling these gangs apart and installing new wheels there's 177 wheels on these roller harrows all together now this roll a harrow here when we bought this we ended up buying this in pieces it was shipped to the dealer in a crate 
we went and picked it up and we put this one together ourselves the last one the other one that we worked on uh, we bought that one all put together and the dam uh, the first day we used it the uh, front gangs fell out of it because these bearings weren't put on tight enough and we had a lot of other loose parts and whatever on that other roll of harrow so we figured when we bought this one we would try to get some money knocked off on it and we figured we would put it together ourselves so that's what we did we had to hook up all the hoses to it oh you had to put cylinders on all the teeth you name it it was in pieces so the boys are going to be back in here in a little while we're going to get started on this they've got parts for the merger that they're working on i am putting together the cam follower tracks for the uh head on the merger um we'll show you how that goes together here in a minute uh, this one is the better one of the three on this particular machine. Uh, the pickup head teeth uh, follow this track here and it, it moves the tooth bars in an orientation that they need to be to pick up the crop and to dump it off on the uh, belt of the machine, the conveyor belt, so it can run it to one side or the other to make a uh, larger windrow so we'll go over and show you what uh where they get mounted on the machine here and we'll show you the cam follower track that is really war um, on that center head it's just about paper thin right here this one is in decent shape however we're this far so we might as well put new ones on it so these here are pretty simple to put together. There's a bearing that you put in on each side of the cast uh, track or cast uh, cam follower track here. There's a bearing, then there is a uh, thick spacer, a snap ring to hold the bearing in, and then we'll get the uh, shaft itself in there and that's got a couple of snap rings that's on it as well we'll drop this snap ring in here then we'll flip it over I have a hole in the bench because I what I use this bench for is a um, magnetic um, magnetic uh, drill press and when I drill material off the side of the bench I end up um, using this side and I can drill whatever I'm drilling and I can run the drill right down uh, through the uh, bench itself little snap rings can be a little bit of a booger but they're manageable
forgot my thick washer. Figure that snapper went down in awful easy. There. And that's all there is to that. So we've got two more to rebuild for uh, this merger and then we'll go ahead and put the other three together for the other one. So we have this head all in pieces here. The cam follower tracks, they run in the center and then the, the tooth bars follow that track so it can pick the crop up. And as the tines are going back, they roll out of the way and then they come back into play when they uh, pick the crop up. Now, we're already done with these three pieces uh, for this, this merger here. These are the drum tooth bar assemblies here. There's six tooth bars on each drum, and then there's a cam follower bearing. This is the bearing that uh, runs inside the cam follower track. This cam follower track here, is it this one? Yeah, this one here is really war. You can see that it is just, it's, got a lot of acres on it so it's wore right back here to the point that it probably wouldn't have only done a few hundred more acres and it would have been dropping the uh, cam follower roller which is right here this follows this track like this and it comes around and then it's moving the, the teeth up and down and back and forth now we've got two of these mergers this is the 34 footer this is the newer one of the two the other one is a 30 footer and it's using basically all these same parts however instead of it having four longer drums here it's got six of them that are this side here now we ended up replacing the bearings that the tooth bars uh, go on to or the yeah and um, it was just uh, uh, the, the time to do it is, is now. Here are the, the replacement bearings here that go on the actual tooth bar itself. And then we've got a pile of bearings here somewhere. These ones right here. These are the cam follower bearing and they go on the uh, end of the tooth bars here and you can see the difference in between the new one here and the old one this old one is wore down and it's taking that rounded edge right off of it and it's running that sharp bearing wheel around there and then that's what's eating up the cast cam follower track so we've got one there one on the bench and this, the worst one is right here and this one was the center one. Of course, the center head is going to get more use than uh, the outside heads. And that's why that one is wore as much as it is. Now, we replaced the bearings inside and we replaced the shaft because the hex part of the center drive of that hub works on this here and then usually what happens is you round that off and then the shaft is no good and you're having to tear the whole thing apart in order to get into uh, that shaft assembly so we're going to keep at it here the boys are uncovering bunk right now they're going to be in here in a little while and uh we're going to get a couple of teams working here today one on this, one on the roll of harrow, and then we've got a truck to bring in, and uh, we're gonna work on that. Now the 4020 here, we didn't get uh, yellows done on it, but we're ready to do that here in just a little while. Uh, we'll probably actually wait till the end of the day so that we're not gassing everybody out here, but we've got everything in primer, and Jared's got the uh, axles covered up we're going to paint them a flat black but um yeah it's uh it's ready to go here for some paint we'll do yellows tonight and greens tomorrow all right we've got this one just about all completely disassembled we got a bucket load of roll wheels outside and then these are the last of them here 
and then we'll show you what a new one looks like up alongside a old one here. So there is the difference right there. This one's actually bent. That one's not a good comparison. But this one is. So they're wore off quite a bit right there. So we're still waiting for some parts for this merger. Tim has gone after them. And the boys are working on this little Volvo. They're putting a, a new trumpet on there. And in order to put this new air horn on there, they had to take the whole freaking cab apart. So, they're getting that all fastened down. They'll have that on there in a little bit of a minute. And Jared is working on putting the exhaust back together. This truck here used to be a road tractor at one time. And it would have had the exhaust pipe up alongside the cab. But since it's got this little five yard box on there, it's got a exhaust pipe that's alongside the frame there. And she's running it downstairs. So he's kind of cobbing everything together here, but it is what it is. Looks like we need a, a tire right here. So we'll have to get that replaced as well.
the muffler job is just about done. Jared's a little frustrated. This thing was cobbed together when it was converted from a road tractor to a um, little dump truck here and they had that vertical muffler in there like that and he kind of had to retrofit the bracket couldn't get the same style muffler that was on it from when they converted it over from a road tractor to a little dump truck here so looks like it's gonna work though huh we ended up doing new exhaust from the turbo right on back and then the pipe that they're fighting with right now goes in and around and above the fuel tank that interior light won't come back they got the new horn on here and what had happened was is the welds broke loose on this cab shield here and the damn cab shield came down on top of the horn and it broke it so it's a decent sounding horn probably would sound better if there was a pair of them on there but it's only got a single one so that's what it is. All right, we left some wheels to get this roll of Harrow here back together. We were like 47 short. Um, so amount of wheels that they sent us, we've got charged for. However, we just lack that many wheels. We've got three gangs left to do here. So one of the guys went to White's Farm Supply to pick up the wheels that we lack and the other guys are doing other things right now and we're getting ready to uh, do the uh, yellow paint here on the 4020. Well, we got the rest of our wheels here. Fitzy just got back just a little while ago. And they're putting the last two arbors together right now. Doesn't go too bad. These wheels are $67 a piece. Some of the wheels we have to hammer them on. There's on the center of these wheels, there's a little fat left over from when they came out of the mold. And sometimes you get a batch of them. 
that have to be hammered on just to knock that crap off of there. These are center rolls, center wheels, and these here are end ones. And we have to do the same to these. We actually have to grind a little bit of this edge off so that it'll fit down over that arbor shaft. These arbor shafts, they're a four inch piece of pipe and they have the end pressed into them. And when it presses in, it actually balloons it out right here a little bit. So every once in a while you get my, I don't know if these wheels are the end of the run when they don't go on like that or what, but these are right from the foundry. Done up specifically for Landall. Now Brilliant was a company all by itself. Years ago, Landall was making a roll of Harrow too. And it was a little different than the brilliant one here. Now Landall has bought the brilliant company and they actually make these in the brilliant name and uh, the Landall name. Years ago we had a Landall roll of Harrow that was yellow and now they have started making all their equipment blue. Um, Prior to running the Brilliant Roll of Harrows, we used to have an old 950 John Deere that was 16 foot wide. And uh, that had slightly smaller rolls on it and it actually pulled harder than these Roll of Harrows here, which have a larger wheel to them. So they've gotten about as many wheels as they want to get on there. Now they're just going to lay it down on the ground, set it on a block of wood and uh, put the, the last few wheels on there. These wheels are 30 pounds a piece. So that's 22 to an arbor, except one oddball back in the rear there that has 23 on there. So you've got almost 700 pounds of wheels there and then about a 100 pound arbor. So you're at around 800 pounds per section. Roughly. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to throw some primer on these fenders. Now years and years and years ago when I painted a bunch of tractors, this is how we set our fenders up to paint them. We just bolted them to the leg on the gantry here. Of course, that was when we were in the building uh, next door where we're actually painting the 4020. So these are aftermarket fenders here. And the typical spot for the fender, the John Deere fender, to rust out is on this bottom uh, portion and the reason why they do that is because all the crap gets embedded in the actual L bracket holder and this reinforced piece that's on there crap gets down in there and what a guy should maybe do is silicone that but uh, however it's going to get in this form piece as well and then it starts to rust that spot right there. So most fenders, uh, new generation fenders like this are rusted out on the bottom. Now these were aftermarkets, like I said, they're 20 years old. The fenders that were originally on that 4020, I mean, this was just a big bubble of rust from years ago when I painted it and there was holes and through the top, there's a rolled edge uh, right here, which is a little thicker than the uh, actual fender itself. And it was just, yeah, rotted right through. But being that this, the, this is an aftermarket fender, you can tell that it's not an authentic John Deere fender because they're a little, a John Deere fender is a little flatter right here than these units. 
but outside of being 50 feet away you cannot tell that those are an aftermarket uh, fender and they're half the price or at least they were years ago when I put these on there so we're going to uh, throw some primer on them here in a little while once these guys get that last wheel assembly we're gonna go ahead and kick these guys out of the shop again and one of the other things I'm doing here is I am getting the center link uh, cleaned up I ended up taking the ends out of it it works like a turnbuckle this is the center part here and um, the top part which is sitting on the bench here that came apart decent and I ended up getting this to free itself up so that it can release that ball there and then what you can do when you're hooked on to a piece of equipment when you go to unhook it you don't have to take the center pin out you just unlock your oh i forget what they call this opening in this link here and then you can just pull this third link off of there the bottom portion of this third link i had to put a lot of heat on to get it apart and it was right full of rust there's all this dust here on the bench and whatever else is on the floor and what i'm doing now is i'm just chasing the threads with this thread chaser here now this thread chaser has got maybe like one two three four five six it's got 24 different is there 24 maybe Maybe there's not 24, there's a couple of blanks there. There's about 20 different thread pitches that you can use to uh, chase threads. Now this will not make threads, but it will chase them. And you can only go one way with it. This is the left hand thread of the link. So I've got, I've got my little piece matched up there and I am just going to chase this out and I, I think I need to uh, get two hands on this so we'll come back at you once we get this third link together here Jared wants to shake up some primer and um, we're going to get that them fenders primed there well, it looks like they've got this lined up and they got their end bearing to go on there so this is going to be the close of this work here and these guys have put on how many wheels 354 wheels at 67 dollars a piece how many how many dollars is that 354 wheels 67 dollars a piece that's your math equation i'll ask that again in the morning What's that? I turn it in on yeah. Yeah. That's your homework assignment. Might have to go up or down with that. It doesn't look like it's lined up. All right, we chased some threads out. And before we chase these threads out, I could not only spin this on like one or two threads. So we're gonna get that down on there and I haven't figured out what I wanna do. I, I wanna prime this, get paint on it, but I don't know what we should do. If we should grease it or what. We want this to, uh, to work, but we also not, we do not want it to rust. So that worked, this thread, chasing tool worked freaking great i mean just look at the amount of rust and crap that we cleaned out of them threads and this is the part number of this tool universal outside thread chaser otc 7402 i've had that for quite some time and we've used it for various things now it will not make threads but it will clean threads 
And this is all of the material that Jared cleaned out of the threads, just all that rust. Now this would sit on the tractor vertically like this, and then all the moisture and whatever would go in through the top, and then it would sit down in that turnbuckle. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna prime this as well. And I, I, again, I do not know what we should do. I don't know if we should just spin this down on there and then get it painted, take it apart and maybe put fricking grease on it or wax or something. But um, if we paint the threads, they're not gonna thread in. And if we don't treat them with something, they're not gonna they're gonna rust up so being that this tractor's 50 years old to have this end uh work is is really something 20 some years ago i ended up replacing these roll pins in there this was a little stiff earlier today but it ended up taking off and and working All right, we've got the primer done on the fenders and the uh, third link. You guys have got all the wheels on the roll of harrow here. We've got to put the scraper bar on here yet. And we'll run over next door here. We'll show you what the yellows look like, or look like rather. We've got the wheel weights on the floor here. It, this has only got one wheel weight on each side of the tractor. Got the center hubs painted the correct color before when I painted this. I ended up painting them green just because it was easier to paint it with the whole tractor. We've got to paint the axles yet. Jared's got them all covered up. We'll actually paint that after we get the greens done. We'll just go in, uncover it, and paint a flat black or something on that. So he's got the all the wedges. He ended up dipping them into a gallon of paint and pulling them out. Um, they don't look the greatest, but I think they're going to be just fine once we get the wheel on the tractor. So the next order of business is we're going to put the wheel weights on, and we'll put the wheels on. Then we'll cover everything up. And the reason why we're going to put everything together is we don't want to have to cover this hub up cover the wheels up it's just going to be more things to cover so when you're painting anything uh you'll know if you've got enough paint on if the paint runs off so that's what you see on the floor there that hub has got enough paint on it so does that one there too that one's got it running right down on the ground and so does the rear hub so that's how you know if you've got enough paint on something that you want to have it run right off and onto the floor so um yeah the wheels they didn't run no runs don't good. rust that's right so thanks for watching folks we'll catch you at the next one